So what we're going to do is we're here to expose it, let people tell their story, and let them, let everybody in the public see the horrors of the court system in Suffolk County, New York. Long Island Backstory with Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Good evening, I'm Gary Jacobs and welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory where we're filming at the Alt-T Studios in Hopog, New York. Uh, my next guest today I met a few weeks ago at a street fair uh, out at Smithtown. They had a booth set up with a sign that said free allergy testing. So I looked at it and I, I watched a few people coming in and out and I saw uh, Kristen uh, my guest sitting next to me, putting these little glass bottles in people's hands and pushing up and pushing down. And people would say, and then they would say, oh, you're allergic to this, you're sensitive to this. And people would say, wow, how'd you know that from a glass bottle? I was pretty skeptical and I looked at it and said, you know, this, this is crazy. How could anybody know from lifting up a glass bottle what they're allergic or what they're sensitive to? But listening to the people who were tested, they were like shocked that, that they knew it. So I said, you know what, I need to learn a little bit more about this. So uh, earlier in the week, I stopped by their offices in St. James and they told me about it. And after they explained it to me, I said, wow, this, this, really, this really makes sense. And I need to have these people on our show because I was really intrigued and it's just really, it's really interesting. And there's a real science behind what they were doing. So welcome to the show. To my left is Kristen Davies and to her left is Michelle Lieberman from Whole Body Wellness in St. James. Welcome to Long Island Backstory. Thank you for having us. Thanks. So the first thing I want to ask is what made you both get into uh, allergy treatment? Um, when I was 16 years old, I was extremely sick. I would go home from school every day and I could only eat four foods that wouldn't bother me and I would be sick every single day. So um, my mom actually went to a, a church and she, some lady was saying, oh, I'm feeling so much better. I went to this acupuncturist. I can start eating cheese again. So my mom said, let's try it. So I went to this acupuncturist and now I'm able to eat so many different foods than I used to be able to eat. Great, and Michelle, what about you? Um, I started with pretty much when my husband, he couldn't, um, tolerate any foods he would eat. Um, he was constantly running to the bathroom or con constantly having sinus issues. So he decided to find something else uh, besides regular um, medical treatment because he went to a doctor, he went to an ENT, he went to a GI specialist, he went to a psychiatrist and everything. They kept saying, oh, you know, it's, it's all psychological. So they gave him a Xanax and he said, the Xanax <laughs> is not working. So he decided to try acupuncture and then as he went through these treatments, he started eating and feeling better, having less sinus issues, less digestive issues. So then I was intrigued, so I started going for myself for sinus issues, and I haven't had a sinus infection in 12 years. Great, so let's start at the beginning. What, what actually is an allergy? They're both looking at, I guess it's a complex <laughs> thing what an allergy is, because I'm looking, you know, to me an allergy is, you know, you, 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 something that you, you ingest or you smell and you have a, you have a reaction, inflammatory reaction to right, it, but I don't know, technically, you right, know. It's an immune response that the body has, um, and it causes histamines for your body, and then it tries to protect it, so it um, automatically sometimes will, and how you react is either anaphylactic, depending on how bad the allergy is, it can be anaphylactic, it could also even, it's not really an allergy, I would say more of a sensitivity would be um, a runny nose or a gas and bloat of that sort. So, so you sort of answered my next question, what are the symptoms of an allergy and are all allergies symptomatic? Not necessarily, not necessarily. Um, sometimes you don't even know it, you, um, sometimes you think you're okay or people, most people including myself thought it was normal to have a runny nose after they eat something. So. Um, after I got treated on several occasions or some of several of these things that I started having uh, less runny noses, I noticed, I said, something's changed, so I found out it was from dairy. So know? it's possible to have an allergy and not know you have an allergy, because if you only know your own body and you think, oh, this is normal that maybe I get itchy or like I said, I have a runny nose or after I eat a certain food, I, you know, you get a stomach ache or like I said, your husband went to the bathroom. Right. So you say it's possible to have allergies and, and not even know it. Right. And you know, most people probably, don't routinely get allergy tested. No, you know, it's, it's not normal. It's not something that your, no. your doctor does on the uh, regular uh, physical. So now we're gonna get into what intrigued me about seeing you guys or seeing uh, Kristen at the street fair is tell us how uh, you test for allergies. Because the way I know 
my son had allergies and we went to an allergist and he took a thing on his arm and he injected like 30 different needles on his arm and then I think a day or two later we went back and he looked at a chart and said, okay, this one got red, this one's a little red, and that was how he did the allergy testing. Yours was a lot less invasive than yeah. that, but it also looks like it's witchcraft if you don't know what you're talking about. So I'm gonna let you show me how you guys test for allergies and how it works. Okay, okay. so this is the first thing we do is it's a technique called MRT, which is muscle response <coughs> testing. So pretty much we don't treat allergies, we, we help allergies feel better, like we can help the response better. We treat more sensitivities, so like, for example, if you have a reaction after you eat something, you get the gas and bloat. So um, when we do treat them, we actually have the, the immune response to lessen, so you don't have it as severe as normally you would. Um, so muscle response testing is you take energies of certain items, so everything has energy, including heat, including electricity, and we want to see how it responds to your body. Now, if, you're, if your body feels it's um, a threat, your body's going to go weak and cause a reaction, which is... It could have a headache, you can have digestive issues, you can run to the bathroom. So what this is in, in these small little vials is actually energy of a certain item. So for example, right here we have sugar, so we have energy of sugar. So it's, it's, you said it's energy of sugar, is it just regular, is it sugar or is it something special about that vial? No, well it's the energy of sugar. So how do you get the energy of sugar? Everything has a molecular structure. Okay. Okay, so that molecular structure is actually energetically put into uh, water and alcohol, that's what's in here. Okay. And so we wanna see how, and the energy through this vial is what gets tests to see if you are uh, responding negatively or positively to. So the energy goes, goes because I looked at it, I thought you were testing like the feel of sugar. And I said, well, how the hell can my body feel sugar through a glass bottle? So it's really, that's not what it is. It's the, and, and you see the energy, you explained to me that the energy goes through the glass. Right, and we all have energy fields. So how okay. does, so. It, you, obviously you can't see it, it's intangible, but um, we all have energy, just like heat. You can't feel, like you can't see heat, but you can feel heat. So you can feel the sugar of the molecular structure, but you can you can actually see it in this vial. So right. that's how it kind of works. And we're that sensitive that we could pick up energy from that little little, little glass bio. bottle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in, in the, back in the day when Dr. Nubujupad who started this technique, you used to actually use the real substance, like a real egg or real sugar or a carrot or whatever. And now they... Been it's gotta be a lot safer. Yeah, and it's a lot easier. <laughs> you put, yeah, because then you have this whole bottle, you have like 50 different uh, oh, there's items. Oh, this over 30 kits. Oh, okay. So this is just one of them. Okay. Okay, so show us how, how, you, how okay. you test if so, somebody has it. Um, muscle response testing. Okay, so pretty much um, when the body, when you look at the body, you want to see if the body is um, balanced, and how we do that is it's called a polarity check. So what we do is resist me, and we push lightly. So we're not overpowering the person. Okay, we want to make sure that this arm is not going down when we're first testing. So resist me and push up. So if she's nice and strong. Now we're going to do a polarity test. We're going to see if she has a strong and a weak, and that's how most energies work in a negative or positive way. So how we do that is we press this point and then we turn the back of the sides of our hands and then we go down, then her arm goes down. Now, if there's something in her energy field that her body is not reacting to, her arm is gonna stay strong. If her body reacts to something, then her arm is gonna go down. For example, we'll say sugar, okay? So right now, she's not gonna touch the sugar, she's gonna resist me and she's gonna be strong. Now she's gonna hold this vial of sugar, it's the energy of the sugar, and she's gonna go weak. So what we do is we actually treat the body to actually um, reprogram the brain to say when I eat the energy of sugar will not uh, respond in a negative way which is normally like an allergy or sensitivity where you have the runny nose and all that and all uh, digestive issues or headaches of, of any sort okay so let me so what happens now you determine that somebody has an allergy or a sense uh, or a sensitivity Th do they need to be treated because you know if I'm allergic to something you know there's so many foods out there let's say I'm allergic to shrimp or shellfish and I said well I don't really like that that much anyway I just won't eat it or I'm allergic to bee stings but I'll just be careful that I won't get stung by a bee you know do you need to treat an allergy or is there a problem if you don't treat it and you say ah, you know what I'm allergic to ragweed but I'll just deal with it and take some claret and over the counter and treat it symptomatically and in a couple months you know the season will pass 
Well, you can do that, but I don't recommend that because eventually what happens is normally when you have one sensitivity or an allergy, there's several others. So maybe you won't feel it now, but several years down the road, whether you're 70, whether you're 27, whether you're 50, eventually it will affect you in some sort of way and the whole body will not be in balance and that's the whole point of our body is to be in balance. So if that's in balance, we prevent sickness and disease. So. Um can you, can you actually develop an allergy or is this something that you're born with and if you have them, I know a lot of people are more, you know, they say, like Kristen said she had a lot of allergies, I don't think I have that many, but can you, can you develop allergies as, as we get older or even as a kid, can you develop an allergy? Yes, you can develop an allergy at any time. Um, I actually didn't have any allergies until I was, you know, 15, 16 years old and then all of a sudden, bam, hit, yeah. got hit with everything. Is that common that they come in, in your teens? Um, it just depends on the person in the case and stress in their life if there's an event that um, caused something to happen. So wait a minute, my divorce caused my allergies? Because I did get them as I got older. I didn't tie it into to, to my divorce. But I, I know I got, as I got older, I got allergies or sensitivity to things that never bothered me in the past. And now certain things, you know, you know that, that never bothered me, bothered me. Now you mentioned yesterday, I was asking about, because uh, when I was in your office, there was somebody that was there for uh, gluten. And I asked about an allergy, and you said, well, that's more of a sensitivity. So explain the difference between an allergy and a sensitivity, and does it matter for yes, the treatment? Yes, it does matter. It actually does matter. There is a difference between an allergy and sensitivity. An allergy is actually um, when you have an anaphylactic reaction sometimes, um, or to the point where you have hives all over your body. A sensitivity is more like a runny nose, a headache, a digestive issue. Digestive issue. Um, an allergy is harder to treat, and sometimes, like for example, like if you have an anaphylactic, which is like a class, you go to a um, to an allergist and you get these RAS tests or these skin tests, and you blow up. Those are hard, a lot harder to treat, and sometimes we don't even treat them because it takes a long time, um, and also it's not something we recommend for people to do. <laughs> okay, so the, but, uh, when I was there and, what the, and I was reading about what you do, the, the system that you use, I don't know if it's called a system or a program, was uh, NAET, mm -hmm. which is what I really wanted to get to discussing today. I just want a little bit of background. So first tell me, what is the, do you call it the NEAT treatment or do you say NAET? NAET. NAET treatment, okay. <laughs> so what is, what is the NAET, NAET treatment? Uh, it's the program is what would you call it? It's a, it's a treatment. Okay. Um, it's based on acupuncture. Um, NAT stands for Numbujipaj Allergy Elimination Technique. The, um, she developed it in 1983. Um, since then, it's progressed a lot. Uh, but pretty much, it works with energies of certain items and the energy of your body. Because not everybody will react to the same thing. So, depending on your stresses and depending on your genetic makeup, your body will respond in different ways. So sometimes, depending on, depending on it, the issue or what it is, sometimes it might take one treatment, sometimes it might take 20 treatments, on, depending on your situation. So how does one become certified in the NAT treatment? Okay, so first of all, the NAT, you either have to be um, an MD, um, an acupuncturist, or a chiropractor. Okay, and how do you become certified? Is there like a school, you go for training? I'm assuming nobody can just say, hey, I wanna be, yeah, an expert in this, and you read no. the book, and you set up an office, and you're done. You know, it's no. got to be a, you know. Yeah. I wish it was that easy. Yeah. So, so how did, is, is there a class that you take? Yes. Well, so um, we, we, we had to have an associate's degree before we went to acupuncture school, and then um, three years of full trimester, so we have a master's in health science and acupuncture. Once we received that, then we uh, went to California for, for um, the seminars. They're long weekends, and we learn how to muscle test, and we learn how, to, how this works. And there's several treatments or several seminars throughout the year. Currently, they are not doing them in California anymore. They're doing more online, so we don't have to travel and spend so much on the expenses, so, which is great for us. And it's more like conducive, so if we have time here and time there, we can learn the same modules without being removed from where we're located. Okay, so in the, in this, in the NAID treatment, I think you said there was four different uh, parts to the treatment. Uh, go through the four, the four different uh, aspects of the treatment. Okay. So first of all, when we when you when you come in, we if you come in for your chief complaint is I have I have headaches. So at that point, we evaluate you, ask you, you know, what time it happens, or well, um, and take a little bit of a history. Once we figure that out, we actually take this book out that we have at the first, you know, in our each treatment room, which we have seven treatment rooms, um, and then we go through through each one of these to see what might be causing the headache. So how we do that is through the muscle testing. So 
they'll have their arm up as they're touching each one of these and they'll go weak or strong and that will tell us what we need to treat going forward. Okay, and then, how do you, and then what is the treatment? So then after that, after you do that, we do, um, uh, we have you lay on your stomach and we uh, stimulate the nervous system because that is the main. And that's with that tool, actually, we're going to show that clip right now yes. that you use that, that tool. It looks like sort of a power drill or something. <laughs> that, it's actually that you're like doing. you're getting a massage at the same time. Right, so. and what is that doing? That's actually stimulating the nervous system to send signals to the brain back down to the rest of the body because um, we treat the body as a whole, to say, okay, whatever I'm holding in my hand, because we hold it in our hand. So you're holding it at the same time mm -hmm. you're doing that, okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, to say, okay, I will not resp respond negatively anymore when I'm um, after these 25 hours. Okay, and then the second part? Um, the 25 hours is actually, um, also just let me explain, the 25 hours is, it takes your body 25 hours to um, reprogram itself to realize that it's no longer a threat to your body. Okay. okay. Um, and the, after that, you flip over, and then we um, insert um, uh, small needles into the body. Which we're going to do right now. This is my first time getting acupuncture, so, you <laughs> know. And I hate needles, so we'll know if it hurts. And if I start crying, we won't do a zoom in shot on that. Does it matter which hand you're going to use? No. Okay. Well, we'll do this one so we can see that. You've done this before, right? Yeah, I hope. <laughs> no, this is my first time, actually. Okay. Just so that's just one that's of the it? points. Yeah. That's one of the points. And there's several points in the body. There's like over 2,000 points in the body. You don't but get 2,000 needles. Please no, tell me that. No. But actually, you can't, even, you can't even feel this. No, there's about 10 needles for the, this treatment. Okay. So that's and then how long does that sit in you? So you sit there for about 20, 25 minute, minutes, and we put nice, relaxing music on, and we um, eventually your body just relaxes and sometimes people fall asleep which is great right okay and then okay now we can take the needle out please <laughs> okay okay so that's the second part is the uh you know you, the first part is the the stimulation the second part is the acupuncture and um, is there any other components to it well, like i said so after like depending on what you're getting treated for so if it happens to be sugar you have to stay away from sugar for 25 hours okay so we have you come in the following week to retest you to make sure you're strong because it takes 25 hours for your body to reprogram itself and then after that, we see if you're strong. So if you're strong to the sugar, we go down to the next item. So if it just happens to be, let's just say, um, gluten grains mix. Right. So, and then so how many treatments would, would you do for each one of these things? Let's say you're using sugar, for an example. I mean, how many times would someone have to come back before you would see the response be different towards, towards sugar? Uh, just one treatment for really? that. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, but, that's amazing. You know, it depends on the situation, too. Each each, each case is different. Um, if you're coming in for seasonal allergies, it's a lot quicker to treat than if you're coming in for major digestive issues. So, right. so depending on the case, is depending on how many treatments. I mean, do people ever come in, they do the treatment, then they come back and they're like, I can't believe it. That Actually, that happened last week. Yeah. yeah. A week ago. So people are just Two like to totally shocked. <laughs> um, can these come back? Once you're, once you're treated for it, can they come back or do you have to go for, you know, upkeep or maintenance? Like maintenance? Okay, so most of the time they eliminate and they don't have to come back, but sometimes sure. depending on how sensitive you are, you have to get retreated maybe once a year, once every three years, depending on the, the body's, you know, how, how the body's responding. Okay, and what is, what is the success rate then? I mean, it's percentage-wise, do you have an idea of what the percentage rate is? I would say, 95%. Yeah, 95%. Wow, it's that yeah. high. Yeah. So, yes, especially if you, we, depending on what you're treating. Well, so now, to do with something like this, does the insurance cover? Because a lot of times they don't cover these uh, holistic type approaches. Does do insurance companies cover this? So some they... insurances take you know treat especially for back pain, neck pain, headaches, and digestive issues, which are due to normally food sensitivities. So yes, yeah, some of them do. Because I guess they're, they're, then they're happier that you're not going to the allergist. Because to me, when somebody goes to an allergist, I remember saying they have to go back like every week and get a shot, you know, which is, you know, not, not this little thing. You know, you're talking about a, regu a regular, right. a regular right. shot for, you know, for over. So if you could treat it in one, I would think the insurance companies would, would be happy with that. What, what about uh, children? Because this seems pretty, other than the, uh, the, the, uh, the needles for the acupuncture, it seems not, not very invasive. No. So what's the ages that you can do this? Is it somebody too young, somebody, nope. somebody too old? I started old? treating my daughter at three years old. I mean, three days old. Wow. So you knew she had sensitivity? How, how can you test it in somebody um, that... Well, she was very colicky. She wouldn't digest, like she wouldn't go to the bathroom. Very colicky, got constipated within the first two, three days of me feeding her um, formula. So it was, she had a problem with dairy. 
Wow. So then I had to get on a special formula. I mean, I did treat her, but I also put her on a special formula. So like, right, you know, right now we talk, we, you know, we mentioned the gluten thing, and that's like a big thing right now, which, I don't know, it seems to come, come out of nowhere, and I've read all different things about maybe it's because of the GMOs, you know, or, or the, you know, just different t things that we're introduced to and more processed foods. Do you notice, uh, since you've been doing this, an increase in, in certain things like gluten? And are, are any of these things psychological? I mean, a, lo a lot because lot you mentioned in the thing like mental health and right. you know a lot of it is emotional sometimes when you have a trauma and you're eating something or you're in a situation that emotion sticks to the food so sometimes you have to do you have to treat an emotion with the food so your body can clear it better yes what, what do you mean by that I mean like if somebody dumps you while you're eating spaghetti, no. you're like, I have a bad emotional reaction to spaghetti. <laughs> so a lot of people, for example, on 9-11, um, when people were eating breakfast and they were seeing that the towers go down, we had a lot of treat people for eggs, pancakes, really? waffles, bacon, whatever they were eating at that point. So there was an emotion connect a fear or worry or whatever, insecurity, whatever it is, because there's several emotions that we have kits for. And then we find out what emotion is connected to that food. And this treats, so are you treating, is this really treating it or is it like a psychosomatic, you're, you're saying because they're getting the thing and then they feel like, they, like they're better, but, or I guess at the end you say, well, who cares, long as, long as, they're, uh, long as they're better, you know, that, that's all that matters? Um, it's, how we tell if they're better is ultimately when they're coming back every week saying, I don't have that problem anymore, I have less headaches, or I don't have, um, when, uh, you know, I don't have the runny nose when I'm eating that food anymore. So depending on the situation, that's, that's most of the time, or we get a phone call saying, okay, I don't need to come back anymore because you helped me within two treatments or four so you put yourself out of business. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess there's enough people that well, have- A lot uh, of people actually like it to, just for relaxation and it helps the, um, to their body to relax and open the meridians and make a better, you know, just overall health. So people do sometimes come back on a weekly basis because it helped them so much that they never want to go back to where they were before. Right, so there is like a maintenance program mm -hmm. that, that people would come I in. Come in all the time, and I notice in the office you do other you, you do other things also. So it's like a whole, you got the whole body wellness. So do, do you work on diet with people when they come in? Yes. yes. So, but so, but you're not saying avoid these no, things. So you're we're just saying just limit it for now until we finish. You know, till we treat you, and then we have them gradually bring it in to see how they're reacting to it. And then sometimes, my, sometimes depending on the sensitivity, how bad it is, sometimes it needs to be treated several times, sometimes it just needs to be treated once. So it depends on the, on the severity and each person. But what about like chemical sensitivity, people who just like to environmental chemicals, is that something? Because you hear a lot of people who just say, you know, with all the things in the environment now and aerosols and, right. you know, is that something that you can, can you can treat can help, also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or what about smoke? Yeah, we yeah. can help stop some Because even if you don't smoke, you know, people react. I think people right now, you know, Definitely. you see people, somebody lights up a cigarette and they're like, and they're like oh, it's disgusting. And then, they, you know, I even feel it now, too, you know, that we're not used to it anymore. So, yeah. you know, we see uh, our eyes burning and we're that's, sneezing, yeah. right. we get a headache. Yeah, I used to be like that, not anymore, because I treat myself for smoke. Uh, do you ever have people that, that come in and just say, look, I have a headache. I have no idea what's causing it. All the time. Really? So if somebody's watching it and they wake up and they have a headache every day, they should come in and get a full evaluation or somebody's in the bathroom all the time. What other symptoms would you say somebody watching it should come in and get, and get tested? Oh, good. Uh, sinus issues, um, gas and bloat, um, uh, chronic allergies, um, what else? Uh, fatigue. Fatigue, anxiety, big time for anxiety. So you say, if, like, what if somebody has Lyme disease? Can you do anything with something like that or is that? Is that different? Mm, or the, what's the one where you're always tired? We can treat the symptoms. We can treat the symptoms. That's very difficult to treat. That's more of like a maintenance thing because we just got to keep it at bay because that's really hardcore like in the uh, cells. So that's a little hard to treat. Right. So what you, you mentioned the, the fatigue. What, could, what can you do for somebody who says, I'm chronically, I'm chronically tired? So we would either treat their adrenals or we'd see what type, what is causing her, their, his or her fatigue. So it could be a food, it could be an environmental, it could be a stress, it could be um, a chemical. Okay. And then we find out which it is and then we treat that. Okay, great. Well, is there anything else you want, you want to add to the, to the show for people who are watching and saying that, you know, they don't know if this is for them? I mean, to come in for an evaluation, what, what, what's involved? Is there, you know, is it expensive to get evaluated the first time? No, um, we, um, depending on the situation, sometimes people just like to know what it's about, so then we have them come in. We don't charge them to come in for the first consult, so if they want to know what it's about. 
Um, if, if they are interested, we can either, one, treat them at that point, or two, we can uh, book an appointment for the following week to see what their protocol would be so that they would, whether they'd be interested. So I would say if some, any, anybody's watching the show and they feel that they don't know what any of these problems are, they should uh, be open-minded you know, open and, and, and definitely in. try alternatives, including NAAT or acupuncture, because of you know pain or allergies of any sort. Great, uh, Kristen Davies and Michelle Lieberman from Whole Body Wellness in St. James. Uh, we'll put your website up at the bottom of the screen. And if anybody, you know, listen, if you have any of these problems, they say they have a free consultation. I say you have nothing to lose. As you said, have an open mind. Come in. Give it a shot, and hey, you, you may be able to get treated. Uh, I guess it's holistically, right? This yes, is a holistic because yes, yes. you're not you're not giving any uh, medications yes. or anything like that. Great, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. Please share our program on Facebook if you like what you see. Long Island Backstory. Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs is uncovering the truth on Long Island. The family court system. Red light cameras. Corruption in local politics. The heroin epidemic. Corrupt judges. At Long Island Backstory, we uncover the truth that the Cablevision news monopoly won't dare touch. We uncover the details you won't see on News 12 or in Newsday. We are local independent media at its best. Long Island Backstory, available on Public Access TV and on YouTube. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Long Island Backstory. Long Island Backstory.